Today I want to share with you the disembarkation from my Azamara cruise, uh, the excellent care they took of me. I took a disembarkation tour. Uh, then I am also going to let you know how I easily could have missed my flight home and some things that we all need to keep in mind as we're scheduling our flights at the end of a cruise. Also, uh, Princess is changing the lineup of their beverage and adding something, so I'm going to let you know all about that. And then finally, there is a cruise line that is building a hotel in one of their most remote parts of the whole world. And this is going to change, open the world a little bit wider for us, so I want to tell you about it. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Thursday, it is October 3rd of 2024. And let's start at the top uh, with me telling you all about Azamara, my disembarkation, the tour, and my flights. So first of all, let's talk about the flights. So we ended our cruise in Nice, France. The day before we were in Cannes, France, and it is not very far between the two. And so the way it was supposed to work is that we leave Cannes in plenty of time, and they were estimating that at the very latest, we would would be alongside in Nice there in the Little Harbor by 8 p.m. Well, as we were leaving from Cannes, the uh, captain let us know that due to the really high winds, he had been talking with the pilot up in Nice, and they were going to have to determine if we were going to be able to go into the harbor by 10 p.m. If we could not make it in by 10 p.m. due to the winds, we would have to wait until the next morning at like 5 or 6 to try again. And so as we uh, made our way along the coast, the captain came on and let us know that we were not going to be able to go into the harbor there in Nice that evening. And so um, with that came a change to the plans of some people that had arranged to get off the ship um, that night or very, very extraordinarily early the next morning. I met people on the ship that had um, their flights leaving from the Nice airport at six o'clock in the morning. They had gotten permission to disembark at three so that they could be off, be to the airport, do everything that they needed to do. Well, um, we were not able to come in. The next morning when I um, got up around 5.30 or 6, um, we were just barely coming in and getting up alongside there in the harbor. And so anybody that had a 6 o'clock in the morning flight had missed it. Uh, the flight that I took home on Sunday was at 6.45 in the morning. And th the reason that I waited is it was by far the easiest way to get home. And I'm really glad that I did because um, from Nice, I can go from Nice to Heathrow and then Heathrow home straight to Salt Lake City and so it worked very smoothly but if I had thought you know what let me go ahead we're going to be in the night before let me get off earlier and I can be home a whole day earlier I would have missed my flight and if you have uh, not flown recently, flights are very full these days. Often they are full. There are not a lot of seats left anymore. And so when you miss your flight, sometimes it can be really hard to get on another flight very soon to get, be able to go where it is that you want to go. So with this, I have been reminded how important it is that we pay attention truly to what the cruise line's recommendations are. I know that uh, one of them that really stands out in my mind, and I have been tempted on this as well, is when you come into Fort Lauderdale or you come into Miami, they will always say, don't schedule your flights before 1 p.m. But you'll look at those flight schedules and you think, I don't want to be sitting in the airport until 5 or 6 p.m. Um, let me just take an earlier one. I am sure it'll work okay. The ship will be in by 7 and I'll be one of the first people off with my luggage. Well, Every now and again, a ship is late due to weather or due to an emergency evacuation they had to do in another place, so they're later coming in. A whole lot of reasons why cruise ships can be a little bit late. So I want to remind you how important it is to follow the guidelines that the cruise lines have. And sometimes things are going to come up anyway and you're going to miss your flight, but I think it will happen less often if we remember to follow the guidelines that the cruise lines put out there. So put that on your list of things to do. As the days roll forward here, I want to share some more of my Azamara experience with you so that you can get a feel for it. It's a big deal to me because it's the first cruise line, other than a river cruise, that I have been on, other than Princess, that I have thought, 
oh, I really, really, really want to go on that cruise line again. And I think it's really important, especially as we see a lot of commotion and changes truly in the direction that some of the really large cruise lines are moving. It's really nice to know that a cruise line like Azamar is out there and we can still have the traditional cruise experience that we've enjoyed so much with a lot of um, up-to-date things as well. So just not old traditional, but the best of both worlds. How's that? So on uh, the day that I got off the ship, I took their disembarkation tour. Lots of cruise lines offer these. They take you on a nice tour of the port city or wherever you are, and then they take you to the airport. It's really convenient for guests who have their flights later in the day or if you're staying over until the next day. So on the morning of disembarkation, uh, first of all, let me tell you, I went down to the gangway and it was not hard getting an elevator to go down. I know sometimes on Princess, um, Norwegian, the other cruise lines, Royal Caribbean, Carnival, all of them, it can be really hard to get an elevator. Not hard to get an elevator at all. So I go down to level three where the gangway is and immediately one of the crew members is there and I have my little carry-on with my backpack on top of it. He immediately takes it and says, I'll take care of this for you. We go out and they have the luggage lined up um, by the color of your luggage tag, meaning what you're gonna do. So mine was that green color and um, I had my sticker on. They bring the sticker and the luggage tags uh, to your cabin and they said, you know, put on your um, excursion number sticker so that we can identify you easily so I go out there immediately they see where my luggage is guide me over to it and um, they've got lots of porters there to take care of it and um, take it right over to the bus while they are loading it the um, lady with Azamara there is um, there and she says what time does your flight leave and I said you know mine is actually leaving tomorrow because so I'm going to do the tour um, get off at the airport and I'll just get a taxi to my hotel and she says what's your hotel and so I told her it was just over there by the airport and um, so she says I'll be right back so she comes back and she says we will take you to your hotel we had the best tour I would say that my day in Nice and definitely the tour definitely the tour was my best um, day of the trip it was that good she did an excellent job we had an excellent bus driver absolutely enjoyed every moment of it saw so much enjoyed so much they took us to a place to um, sample the foods of that are very very specific to nice there and they don't just give you something like this big there was like a plate with lots of different things to try um, delicious it was just outstanding so we get to the airport they let everyone else um, off with their luggage off they go to catch their flight and they take me over to my hotel and they don't just dump me on the sidewalk with my suitcase and everything nope they take me up into the lobby with my luggage make sure i'm ready to get checked in now that was not on what was listed in the excursion, but that's what they did. And I feel like it's really important to share that with you because that to me is a really good example of the level of service that Azamara offers. They take really good care of you. Now I cannot guarantee that every time you go on a disembarkation tour to the airport that they'll take you to your hotel, but that day that's what they did. And I don't know if it's because they saw that I was traveling by myself and, um, or they, you know, just taking extra good care. So I just wanted to put that out there and let you know uh, some things that you can expect. And um, I truly am looking at itineraries because I want to go again and I'm looking forward to going again. Alrighty, so put your questions in the comments about other things that you would particularly like me to cover about Azamara. Now, next up, let's talk about Princess. Um, we all keep track of Princess quite a bit around here, and I thought you might like to know that Matthew McConaughey and his wife have organic uh, brand of organic tequila, and they are going to start um, having it available on Princess Cruises. Um, late last night, I saw an ad on Facebook for it, and then today, the press release was out there and so the name of it is um, pantalones p-a-n-t-a-l-o-n-e-s and like I said, it's an organic tequila. It's going to start being available on princess ships. So if you're someone that enjoys tequila, uh, there's another option for you. So let me know what you all think about that. And um, yeah, if you think it sounds like something. Now, before I tell you how the world of travel just wind a little bit more, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, will you please go ahead and hit that subscribe button? We'd love to have you with us and indeed we need you. Also, if you appreciate my videos, would you please give this video a thumbs up? It really makes a difference. So thank you so much.
Well, Silver Seas, if you're not familiar with Silver Sea Cruise Line, um, they are a luxury cruise line. They run cruises in lots of areas of the world, but they are also very well known for their expedition cruises down to Antarctica. Expedition, if you're not familiar, means that you actually get off of the ship when you are in Antarctica. You get to ride on those zodiacs, you get to walk on the White Continent, and it's a really special way to get to see Antarctica. As part of their Antarctica program, Silver Seas has just announced that they are building a 150-room hotel in Port Williams, Chile. So Port Williams, Chile um, has about 2,800 residents, and it is the southernmost inhabited town on the earth. And it is very well situated. It is very remote. But it is a very well-renowned um, area for people that want to um, go to Antarctica. But it is also very um, well-renowned for people that want to see Patagonia and the Tierra del Fuego National Park, that whole region. Now, Silver Seas is the only cruise line that is presently sailing out of Port Williams, Chile. A lot of the other cruise lines that do the expedition cruises generally sell from Ushuaia in Argentina. And so this hotel is going to kind of... Um, level up uh, the experience for guests who are coming to travel on those Antarctica expedition cruises in all of the articles that I can find about it and it is very well written up like you can find it in Travel and Leisure you can find it in Forbes you can find it in lots just of the travel um, you know just it's, it's a wide range of people are really excited about this not only people in the travel industry but also people in the financial industry okay <laughs> if I can say that that way because this is a really big deal and so um, it's going to have beautiful views um, not only of the Tierra, Tierra, Tierra del Fuego mountains but also of the Beagle Channel it's going to be a really special place to stay and so if going to Antarctica is on your bucket list this might be something that you want to consider. Uh, as you know, we've got a group that we are going to do on Princess to Antarctica in 2026, and I am so excited. Uh, Gordon and I have done that once before. It's not expedition, though, you, so you don't get off the ship, but the scenic cruising is spectacular. You shouldn't think that that is somehow second. It's different than getting off in an expedition trip, but it's not second. It's absolutely remarkable. So I'm going to share that with you. But um, I'm really excited about this. I'm going to keep an eye. Nothing has been mentioned about pricing, anything like that. But I just thought I would put it on your radar because, um, like I said, it opens the world a little bit wider to where we can travel, where we can stay longer, and what we can see. So um, I hope it's helpful to you. Thanks so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow. tomorrow is going to be a watershed video. I've been thinking about it an awful lot um, and it's going to be talking about the way we look at cruising, travel, some things to keep in mind for 25, 26, and 27. Uh, lots of it that we need to talk about and then we'll plan to talk about it tomorrow night at our live as well. So I will see you then. I'll see you tomorrow and I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.